Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's Restore. It's great to have you here. Can everybody hear me? Can you just wave your hands to me again? Great. Excellent. Today, we're going to be talking about a really important subject. It's called political correctness in today's business or in business today. What is political correctness? Let me use an example of um, the man that made political correctness a travesty in the world, Donald Trump better known as Donald Duck, the pre former president of the United States of America, he actually took the word political correctness to the next level. Did it work to his advantage? Well, he lost the last election and he's still crying over the last election. Let's talk about what is political correctness what does political correctness mean to you as students who are studying to graduate, whether you use it in your personal life or whether you use it in your entrepreneurial life where you're trying to start a business like many of you are, and how you use it when you actually work for someone. Can you imagine telling your boss that your boss is fat or your boss has bad odor? That would be politically incorrect as far as your boss is concerned. But you are speaking the truth. So for you, it is the truth. But is, but is it politically correct? Let's talk about that. And I'll ask you the same question at the end of today's session. Let's ask ourselves, what is political correctness? Ladies and gentlemen, political correctness is a term defined in the dictionary in the Oxford Dictionary, to describe language, policies, measures, or opinions that are intended to avoid offense or disadvantage to the people you're talking to. I repeat, words that are used to describe something that are intended to avoid upsetting someone, hurting someone. That is political correctness. But is political correctness truly less offensive? Is it honest? I will ask you to make that judgment at the end of today's session, especially when you use political correctness in business. Since the late 1980s, the term has been used to describe a preference to include language and avoidance, avoidance or running away from using a particular type of language or behavior that can be seen as excluding, marginalizing, or uh, focused, chauvinistic, or a type of language that favors a certain sect, religion, or color. In actual fact, anything that focuses on Ethnicity, sex, gender, or sexual orientation is something that is usually addressed with political correctness, or it should be. But more people find themselves offended when you use terms. And some of those terms are considered to be politically correct. So let's talk about what is really the discourse that people find whether in a public situation or in a business situation. All right. So if I ask you in simple English, what does political correctness mean? It's a word used um, or a sentence used expressing contempt or the fact that you disagree with something, a decision or a policy that is excessive or unwarranted. Okay, so let's put that in real terms. Let's put that in real terms that when you talk to someone, being politically correct is somewhat of a must. It really is. Because if you fail to be political correct, you will actually, um, in some cases, offend someone. But more often than, than not, when you are politically correct, People might not really understand what you're saying. Let me give you an example. If I say, did the postman deliver your letters? Did the postman deliver your letters? Now, postman, everybody understands, 
as the person who delivers your mail. But if you want to be politically correct, you should not be saying postman. You should be saying the postal person or the postal service delivery person. Why? Because if you say postman, you're actually discriminating against women. You're actually marginalizing all post people to man only. And now there is post women that deliver mail. Does everybody understand that? Yes or no? Many years ago, if the guys said we're going to a striptease club, they were going to see female strippers in a club. But now you can't refer to strippers as females only, because there's also male strippers in some club, because they serve a different part of today's world, a different part of today's community. Now, which term is politically correct? If you're talking to your best friend, um, Naguang, and you say to him, tomorrow we're going to a stripper club to watch the girls, technically speaking, most people who go to a striptease club go to watch the girls. But if you say, I'm going to a striptease club to watch people who strip, technically speaking, you're truly inferring females. But unfortunately, in today's society, it is not politically correct to say strip female striptease or strip girls or strippers. Um, it, 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 as soon as you associate it with the word female, it becomes politically incorrect because it is actually marginalizing people. It's discriminating against the female sex and it's seen as politically incorrect. Let's take political correctness and relate it to a real business scenario that we have spoken about in the past. Does everybody know about Singapore Airlines? Who knows about Singapore Airlines? Put up your hand. Put up your hand if you know Singapore Airlines. Come on, quickly. Put up your hand if you know Singapore Airlines. Good. Okay. Only three people know Singapore Airlines. Have you all been listening to my lectures for the last year? Singapore Airlines is Singapore's national carrier, right? Now, many years ago, Singapore Airlines used to promote itself as come fly the Singapore girl. Come fly the Singapore girl. Do you all agree with that? Does everybody remember that? Yes? So the reason Singapore Airlines used to promote itself as come fly the Singapore girl is because for 20 or 30 years, businessmen were attracted to fly with an airline with beautiful girls known as a Singapore girl. They all looked the same. They all had the same haircut, the same hair color, the same lipstick, the same body measurements, the same nail polish, the same legs, the same shoes. Everything was the same. That was the picture of the Singapore girl. In actual fact, if you got on the plane, the only thing that would change or make you realize which girl is which girl is with her name badge, because otherwise they were all made to look exactly the same before they wore the uniform. It was clowning girls to look exactly like a picture. That's what they were doing. But unfortunately, 20 years in progress from the 1970s or 80s, when we came to 2015 or 2013, Business and society said, stop, you can't say come and fly the Singapore girl because you're discriminating against women. You're saying that Singapore Airlines is only good for men, that the only people who should fly Singapore Airlines are the people that want to see the beautiful women. So what happened to Singapore Airlines? In the fear of losing female customers, in the fear of being tagged as a racist, discriminating, chauvinistic airline or an airline that marginalizes its customers, Singapore Airlines gave away the Singapore Girl campaign, a campaign that they had invested millions of dollars building through one of America's most prominent advertising agencies some 25 years ago. That they did in order to be politically correct. So now they say, 
come fly Singapore Airlines. Okay, come fly Singapore Airlines, not come fly the Singapore girl. They took the word girl out of the tag. Does everybody understand that? Yes or no? Okay, so that's an example of a corporate identity trying to become politically correct. Does everybody understand that? Yes or no? All right, so let's take it to another element of a business trying to put itself to be politically correct. Who can give me an example of a business that in the past wasn't politically correct? Anyone? Today, more than ever, businesses are trying to be environmentally friendly. And if you go to McDonald's, you can't get straws anymore, or the straws they give you are only with takeaway, if you're lucky, because they think that giving their customers straws is seen to be environmentally non-friendly, and it's politically incorrect to promote that they provide straws. So they tell the world that they don't give you straws anymore. They don't use plastic bags. They use paper bags, which are more environmentally friendly. They want to try to be politically correct. You all understand that? Yes or no? Yeah? Okay. So let's go on and talk about political correctness. I think we've still got try people trying to join us. Um, okay. We'll continue, though. Just one moment, please. The term is generally used, as I said, as a word or sentence expressing contempt or disapproval with an implication that particular decisions or policies are excessive or unwarranted. So if you're politically incorrect, you're basically, if you're politically incorrect, you're basically saying that you disagree with something that somebody's doing or the person who's politically incorrect, you disagree with. For example, Singapore Airlines saying come fly the Singapore girl was politically incorrect. And people express that very strongly by telling them that you're being racist, you're being chauvinistic, you're marginalizing your customer base. So they changed it. The phrase politically correct first appeared in the 1930s. Yes, the 1930s, Amal, before you were born probably before Iris was born, okay? Probably before I was born, okay? It was actually before I was born, okay? This term was used to describe expressions of opinions very strongly or positively as if they were facts and thus dogmatic adherence to ideology in a very authoritarian regime. Take, for example, the Nazi German regime under Hitler, and the Soviet Union of Russia, okay? In actual fact, it was considered an in-joke. That means people made fun of politicians who were politically wrong. They used them as satire to actually make fun of them in order to make sure that they express their feelings about the unorthodox political orthodoxy that they were running. For example, many years ago in Thailand, um, all school kids had to have a certain short haircut or you couldn't go to school. But because the population of Thailand said that this is not orthodox, kids should be able to wear any hairstyle they want, the government had to become politically correct. Instead of saying all boys must wear Thai school haircut, all girls must wear their hair at chin length, the Thai government changed it to say all schoolboys and schoolgirls should wear their hair neatly and in line with the school's policy. That's it. They took away dictating how their hair should be cut. So because it was politically considered unfair, it was considered too forceful, and it was considered like they were living in a German Nazi regime by telling them how they should look. They were only kids. So 
eventually the Thai government decided to become politically correct and enforce new rules in Thailand right throughout the Kingdom of Thailand. Let's go on. Remember, political correctness can be defined as dogmatic. And what do I mean by dogmatic? Implies being unduly and offensively, offensively positive in laying down principles and expressing opinions. All right? So basically, you're telling someone that you basically don't agree with their opinions, or you're telling them that you believe this should be done that way. Magisterial is when you stress an assumption or use prerogatives appropriate to a magistrate or a schoolmaster enforcing acceptance of one's opinion. And that's what the Thai government were trying to do to Thai school kids until they changed the law. All right. So whether you look at it from a dictatorial element, a magisterial element, a dogmatic element, a doctrinaire element, or an oracular element, it means imposing one's will or forcing an opinion on someone else. That's what it means. You're trying to force people to do things or believe in something in a particular way, which may be offensive to others. People might not like what you're saying, and that's what it talks about. All right, for example, let's talk about this. We condemn freedom of speech that hurts other people's feelings. We condemn. What are we saying? We're saying that it's wrong to allow people the freedom of speech in the fear that it might offend some people. Do you understand that, everyone? Yes or no? Philosophically, we say that the freedom of speech is a right that people have in today's world. And yet, if you want to be politically correct, you should be saying that freedom of speech that could cause offense to anyone is wrong. So is it correct to be politically correct all the time? Or should we only be politically correct when it affects our business and our livelihood? All right, can I ask you, how many of you would like to give away freedom of speech? How many of you don't want freedom of speech? Put up your hand if you think that freedom of speech should be banned. Anyone? Anybody who believes that freedom of speech is your right, put up your hand. You think that freedom of speech is your right? Put up your hand now. Paula, you don't want freedom of speech? Put up your hand, Paula. Good, excellent. All right, guys, you have to be active. Paula, you have to interact in the class. Put up your hand and participate. Otherwise, you won't learn anything, Paula. All right, so freedom of speech is a right. Freedom of speech is an entitlement. So it, can we accept the statement that to be politically correct, freedom of speech that in any way could offend anyone is incorrect? I disagree with that. So I pose you the question, do we need to be politically correct when we're talking to our friends or family? Do we need to be politically correct when it comes to freedom of speech? Or do we only need to be politically correct when we're doing business in the effort that we don't lose business opportunities? That's the question that we need to address today. That's the purpose of this philosophical subject that I'm addressing today. One of my students here asked me a few weeks ago, how do you talk to people and make sure that you don't offend them or upset them while you deliver a message? Well, it's through being politically correct or incorrect. And I'll explain how that happens very shortly. All right? Okay, Amal, do you understand that? Okay, good. All right. Um, let me ask you, does anybody here know of a situation where somebody delivered a speech which was technically politically correct, but you felt that the language was inappropriate. Who can give me an example? Shaquille, can you give me an example? Go ahead, Shaquille. Hi, Shaquille. Yes, sir. Hello. Can you hear me? 
Yeah, of course I can. Can you give me an example of political correctness that you disagreed with? Uh, I think I could give the example of uh, Donald Trump. Uh, okay. Well, uh, for him, when he was talking about uh, securing his border and building a wall, that was somewhat correct uh, for his point of view, uh, securing the border and uh, stopping the, uh, the influx of the people from outside. But it wasn't right. politically correct because it uh, offended a lot of uh, a, major, uh, a community of the people uh, living in the U.S. and all around the world. Right. So how do you think he could have made it politically correct? I mean, what was a better way for him to say it? How would you have put it if you were writing the script for him? Well, um, Building a wall itself is kind of uh, making fragments and it is kind of offensive, but right. uh, I think there if could I, have if, been- if, if we were to take out the words building a wall, what would you have used? Securing the border maybe somehow, I, 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 I don't know, maybe. Okay, it could be say implementing tighter controls of our borders. Yeah, Okay. Yes. Or exactly. um, tightening our border control policies. It would have yes. been- less offensive to the world. Would you agree with me? Yes, exactly. Very good. Okay, let's talk about another another phase of political correctness. Today, when you when people um, open um, hair salons, they call it a salon, right? Many years ago, when I used to travel the world, they used to be called ladies' salons, men's, um, whatever, okay? So there was discrimination. And there was this thing about why can't a guy go to a ladies' salon that had, you know, good-looking females um, working there, good-looking guys working there. So now that industry, the beauty industry, doesn't say male or female. It threw away that tag because even though, um, you know, even though they thought it actually brought in a certain customer, it is more politically correct to say Joe Bloggs Salon or Joe Bloggs Korean Salon. But if you were to say um, Amal's Korean Girls Salon, then it would be politically incorrect because that means you're discriminating against the male customer element. Does everybody hear that? Yes or no? Okay, simple example, all right? Okay, now remember political correctness is important, especially especially when you're addressing the population or the world, because too many people get offended, all right? But the point is, you need to evaluate the audience you're delivering to, and you need to choose the words properly. So political correctness has a role in society, but what we want to establish today is the role of political correctness in our personal lives? Is it in the way we run a business or is it only from a government perspective? Does everybody understand that? Yes or no? Yeah, do you understand that one? Okay, do you understand that, Hamina? Do you understand that, Makumbi? Okay, let's go on. Let's look at this political correctness statement. Number one, before political correctness, my mother-in-law is so fat. After political correctness, my mother-in-law is so gravitationally challenged. Everybody read this carefully. My mother-in-law is so fat. After political correctness, my mother-in-law is so gravitationally challenged. Tell me, do you both, do you all understand what the second politically correct sentence means. Can you imagine Shaquille Abdurrahman telling your teenage children your grandmother is gravitationally disproportionate? Do you think they would understand that? No way. If you said to your son, grandma is a little bit fat, maybe we shouldn't give her so much rice today, he would understand that, right? It would be the truth. But if you were to go and use the gravitationally Etc. sentence, does your son or daughter really understand that? No. Uh, is it politically correct? It is. Because Shaquille's mother won't get upset when you call her fat. But the reality is she's fat. 
Am I right or wrong? Do I get me wrong, Shaquille? I'm only using it as an example, hypothetical example. I apologize. All right, Shaquille, I apologize. Okay. All right. Does everybody understand that? Yes or no? Yes. I made a mistake a few weeks ago. I made a mistake. I took my daughter to swimming class, right? And of course, her swimming coach is this beautiful looking young lady who um, used to be an Olympic medalist. And I happened to say to her, it's great seeing your cute legs again. And the swimming coach smiled. But after that, she came up to me. She said, please don't say that in front of other parents. I know I've got good looking legs, but you're not supposed to tell me that in front of all the other parents. Okay. And then my daughter went home and said to her mother, mommy, daddy told my swimming coach she has very good looking legs. Guess what my wife did that night? She wouldn't talk to me. All right. Do you understand what I mean by the need to be politically correct? What should I have said to the swimming coach? I should have said, oh, well, coach, you're looking good today, right? But I shouldn't have told her that she had cute, sexy, good-looking legs because everybody standing there got offended. But I was simply telling her the truth about the way I feel. Do you understand that, everyone? Yes or no? Yes or no? Girls, how many of you say to your boyfriend that you're a hunk or you're a spunk? Put your hands up. I want the truth. How many of you said that to your boyfriends? Come on, don't lie. Put your hands up, Ivana. Ivana, put your hand up. I know you've done it, Ivana. I can see it in your face. Come on, Paula. Put your hand up, Paula. You said it to your husband. Come on. Good. Excellent. I know. I know. I know. Probably um, Amala's wife told him that before she married him. I don't know. It's private, right? But the fact is, this is the way that person feels about you. Or this is the way you feel about that person. Now, is it politically correct to say that? No. Because if another girl, if another girl hears you or another guy hears you, they would say that you're being chauvinistic or uh, marginalistic, that all other girls or all other guys are beautiful also. They would say that beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Do you understand that, everyone? Yes or no? Do you understand what I'm trying to deliver, the message I'm trying to deliver? Yes, Hermina, you too, Hermina. I'm sure that once you said to your boyfriend he was a hunk, or you said to your boyfriend that he was a spunk, or you said to he, your boyfriend that he's the best looking guy in town, all right? I'm sure all girls do that. Come on, when I was at university, I had nine girlfriends. I used to hear the statement nine times a week, but now no one says it to me anymore. I'm married, I only have one. All right, so you get where I'm coming from? So that's the fact of life. All right, political correctness. Let's keep going. Do you agree with me, Mr. Amala? Am I politically correct, Mr. Amala? Good man, excellent, thank you. Everybody wave your hands to Amala, please. I want everybody to give Amala a big wave. He is our host and he's the one that makes this session possible. Thank you so much, everyone. Okay, so when we say my mother-in-law is so gravitationally challenged, it really doesn't mean anything. I would say it's gobbledygook. It just confuses the hell out of people. But it's less offensive. Grandma or mother-in-law will not get upset. Let's talk about political correctness. Tell me, are these words correct or incorrect? Mailman, midget, dwarf, blind, flat, fat, or crippled. Okay? Tell me. Tell me why each of these is incorrect. Who wants to explain the first one? Okay, tell me what's wrong with the use of the word mailman, Paula. I explained it before. Why is mailman politically incorrect. Paula? You need to open your microphone, young lady. If it's muted, I can't hear you. You're politically incorrect. Are you there? I can't hear you. You have to unmute your microphone. Hello, everyone. Yeah, hi. All right. Hi. Paula, tell everyone, why is the word postman or the job title postman politically incorrect? 
because within our generation now, we also have a post women or male women who's also doing the job of sending postcards or mails. So okay. now we don't marginalize or uh, uh, just allow them to be to use as a man or a man. So can I media. ask you, let me confuse you, would it be correct to say policeman or should I just say police personnel? Police office, policeman or police officer. Okay, police officer. Thank you very much. Well, hold on. Police officer refers to male and female, correct? But it yes. doesn't marginalize, right? Yes, correct. Good stuff, Paula. Good to see you again. Thank you so much. Thank Let's you, go sure. to the next word, midget. Who can tell me why midget is politically correct or incorrect? Who wants to try midget? Come on, hurry up. Who wants to explain midget to me? Midget. Does everybody know what midget means? Short, right? Short. Who wants to explain it? Iris, can you explain midget? Can you unmute your microphone, Iris? Why is it politically incorrect? Does it work? I'm. Yeah, you hear me? Yes, of course I can. Go ahead. Okay, okay. Yeah, sometimes, you know. I think... Uh... Draft is, is this um, people who have the small growth, right? The, it's the same as midget. And this is an insult because they have a health condition. We should address them by the name of the health condition. But it's not right, so easy. Thank you. Very good. Dwarfism. I'm myself, I'm, I'm considered in my birth documents a small grown person, but I'm not a dwarf. I'm like, Normal, but like kid, chill, little, little. <laughs> you're, you're a gorgeous woman. You shouldn't say that about yourself. You're a beautiful but that's woman. Says in my document, so I understand how that feels. I got a lot of discrimination. Only one. Thank you very I much. Do, so, Iris, can I? Can you just explain to people what yeah. was it like when people discriminated against you? How did you feel? terrible they didn't even hire me in europe i could not find a job first time it was in a call center where they accept me in germany and in portugal it was easier to get accepted but still people are you know discriminate but in in portugal it's better the people smaller and here in asia is even more better i don't really have a problem anymore also with fantastic children. fantastic Men. well yeah, but it, it, the, the reality is, Iris, discrimination in Asia is yeah. not as big as it is in other countries, especially in the United States and some parts of Europe. Discrimination is a lot stronger. I do remember many years ago, I traveled on Lufthansa um, to Frankfurt. And oh. when my, okay, and when I arrived in Frankfurt, my flight was canceled going on to London. So I yeah. went to the, I went to the first class traffic counter. And I said to the girl there, excuse me, sweetheart, can you help me with my ticket? And instead of her saying, sir, how can I help you? She said, young man, I'm not your sweetheart. Please address me with my correct title. I got the shock of my life because if I went to Australia and said, excuse me, sweetheart, good looking, could you help me? The girls would smile. But in Frankfurt, I learned very quickly that it was unacceptable to address a woman in that way sexual and i would kick your ass for me as well, a european i would kick your ass if men come like this if they call me honey or anything even here in asia okay well, well let me tell you but well, hold on bridget you have to understand the circumstances i was very angry my flight was four hours late and she wasn't really sexy or beautiful <laughs> but i was trying to appease her but okay, I don't the Oh, I learned the lesson very quickly and I never said it again. It was a big mistake that day because she kept me waiting nine hours for a flight. She punished me. And the lady behind me got a flight straight away. All right. So I learned my lesson. Thank you, Bridget. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Let's go on, guys. Let's go to the next slide, the next word. Okay. What was the next word on the material that we just looked at? Let's go back to it. Okay. Let's look at blind, fat, and crippled. Who would like to address the word blind? Who wants to talk about the word blind? Come on, put up your hand. Come on, I need everyone to participate. Efren, can you talk about the word blind, Efren? Where are you, Efren? Open your microphone. Unmute your microphone, Efren. Are you there, Efren? Okay, let's go to someone else. 
Amy. Hi, Amy. Can you explain the word? Um, please go ahead, Amy. Okay. Okay. Yes, go ahead. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. Hi, how are you? So go ahead. Just, I'm good, sir. Thank you. Uh, it's the same thing. It's um, discrimination because you know the persons, they have disability, and then you're going to call them what they're having a problem. So it means is you're discriminating them. Uh, especially, okay. you know that they are having a problem or they know that it's difficult for them, their situation, and they're going to call them blind. It's not nice. It's really, right. really, really bad, Jane. Thank you very much. What's a more politically right. correct way of addressing them? Um, at the first place, you can call them their name or mom, sir, or gentleman, or this. That's very no good. Thank you. Them, or no need to call them blind or something Excellent. like this. You're very correct. Thank, Thank you, you, Amy. Thank you so much. All right. Who would Thank like you. to try the next word on the list? Shaquille, go ahead. Um, can you pull up the list, sir? I, I forgot what was the word. Okay. You want me to show you the words again, Shaquille? One moment. Uh, yes. Okay. Let's go through. The next word is fat, Shaquille. How would you address that? Yeah, I guess. We uh, used this uh, in the meeting today. That is again uh, of a condition. It could be because of a uh, um, some condition or maybe overeating or something. But obviously, it uh, uh, discriminate and uh, kind of embarrassing if you call someone fat. Uh, I think the politically correct uh, correct word could be uh, if you um, maybe uh, overweight. I don't know if, if that. that no, that would still be that bad. would be politically incorrect. Well, let's talk about that. I'll come back to it shortly. All right, good. I'll come back to it shortly, mate. Okay, let's go to Amal. Amal, can you tell us why crippled is politically incorrect? Amal, crippled. Why is it politically incorrect? Amal? Go ahead, Amal. Why is crippled politically incorrect? Can you, you hear me? Go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, why crippled, is crippled uh, Sir, uh, what does crippled mean? Crippled means they can't walk. They're in a wheelchair. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, cripples means that, uh, yeah, sorry, cripples means something. Uh, it is wrong to say the word crippled because if somebody cannot walk, it's discrimination, and you should not use this kind of words for somebody who cannot walk and is crippled. Because they have a medical condition. It's not that they yeah. don't want to walk, yeah. they can't walk. It's because right? of the medical condition, yeah. Thank you very much. Good stuff. Okay, let's go on and look at the correct word, politically correct word, all right? So, postman is now a mail carrier or a post person. All right, somebody, um, the next word was midget or dwarf. We could say somebody who's horizontally challenged with a medical condition, all right? That means that they haven't grown to their fullest height. Somebody who's blind is somebody who's visually challenged. He has problems with his sight but it's not discriminating against any person. Somebody who's stout means somebody who's overweight, all right? Stout, overweight is less offensive than saying you're fat because overweight means you, you weigh more than you should, but it doesn't mean you're obese, okay? For somebody who's disabled, we can say this person has physical challenges rather than saying disabled, all right? Physical challenges and disabled or disabled because of physical challenges. Do you all understand the difference between politically incorrect and politically correct? Yes or no? Yeah? So if I wanted to say that this person is um, Indian, is that politically correct? Yes, because he's from India, right? He's from India. All right. But if I went around saying, oh, this person um, eats curry, he's a curry eater, that would be offensive because everybody in India eats curry. All right. And there is, you know, I remember when I used to travel the world, I used to travel on Gulf Air out of Bahrain. And there used to be this joke on board with the flight crew. They used to say, we've got another curry muncher on board. And they met another Indian passenger that wants to eat curry. And I found that offensive, all right? It's wrong. You say, we have an Indian menu for Indian passengers, right? Yes or no? 
All right? So I stopped flying Gulf Air. I fly Singapore Airlines now. Okay? Do you understand what I mean? No, no offense to anyone. Um, please don't take me the wrong way, Amala. I'm just using it as an example, all right? Okay, all right, mate. Okay. All right. So let's go on. Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about using political incorrectness on a serious matter where you can seriously offend people. If you say to someone, you're a criminal, it's offensive. But if you say to someone, you're behaviorally challenged as an individual, that means you don't behave as an individual, it's less offensive. If we're talking to poor people living in the ghetto in New York, or living in the slums in Australia, India, or Pakistan. We can say that these people are economically challenged people, all right? They're, they're basically economically challenged because of their ethnicity and where they live. But you can't say that they're living in the ghetto because they're poor. That would be offensive. If somebody's homeless, you don't say they're homeless, and make fun of them and make them feel um, as a failure. You say that my friend here is a residentially flexible individual. What does that mean? It means he changes where he sleeps every day. You understand that everyone? Okay. There is a term going around, especially for business people, when they take their secretaries out, they call them dinner ladies. Dinner ladies, all right? So they're ladies they take to dinner to keep their company. All right. Now, if you say to a young lady, you're a dinner lady, you're my dinner lady, um, she might get offended because it has negative connotations. But if you say to her, please be my big day assistant and join me for lunch or dinner, she feels more important. She would be happy to join you for dinner. Okay. So these are taking words that can cause offense and making them less offensive and more politically correct. Do you understand that, everyone? Yes or no? All right. How do you take political correctness and apply it to business today? How do you do it? How do we do it? We spoke about Singapore Airlines. We spoke about um, Thailand and the government policies. We spoke about... Uh, Prime Minister Donald Bush, or Donald Trump, sorry, Donald Trump, Donald Duck. Um, forget Bush, he was never politically correct. But okay, but Trump was more often politically correct and offensive. All right, or politically incorrect, sorry, and offensive. Okay, so because he was politically incorrect, the people that supported Trump loved him, but the people that didn't support him hated him even more because of the offensive language and the marginalization and the discrimination he delivered in the way he spoke, not that he intended it. So in today's world, a world where there's a lot of focus on inequality, there's a lot of focus on discrimination, people are very careful about the words you use and the intent behind the words as much as the idea, especially in business, all right? Especially in business. Can you imagine if I was signing a deal with a client and the client asked me for a discount and I said, well, I don't really care. I need the loot. I need the loot, L-O-O-T. Well, when I say I need the loot, it means I want money, right? But how do you think that will sound to the client who wants to give me his business. Would that show that I really care about his business? No, because I would say, I can't give you a discount. I need the loot. That means I'm hungry for money. I don't care about him as a customer. It would be politically incorrect, correct? So if I was to address his question, politically correctness, I should say, I'm sorry, my cost price would not allow for any further discount. Do you understand that everyone? Yes or no? Are you sure? Yes or no? Okay, let's try something else. Let's try something else. Um, who am I going to talk to? Let's talk to Juan. Juan Layola. Hello, Juan. Open your microphone, Juan. 
Good to see you again, mate. Hi, Juan. Open your microphone. Amala, could you help him open his microphone, please? No, Hi, sir. Juan. Juan, tell me. Yes, sir. This is a scenario. You and your wife went to a restaurant, right? Listen carefully. Yes. You ordered one dish of chicken adobo. This is a five-star restaurant. The adobo cost you, uh, cost you like 500 peso, right? Yes. You took a spoon of it and the chicken smells. It's not fresh, right? Your wife tasted yes. the other dish, the pork adobo, and the skin is really tough and you can't chew it, right? It's like rubber. And then yeah. you, the waiter comes and you say, can I have the check, right? And he says, but sir, you didn't eat your adobo, right? How would you answer him politically correctly? And how would you answer him politically incorrectly? Give me the incorrect answer first. What would you say? So maybe first thing is, uh, of course, I have a comment. Uh, why why cook like that? Especially for that uh, specific food which uh, uh, actually in Philippines we are very uh, basic. So oh, maybe so I talk would, to him. How would, how would you say it? How, what would you say to the waiter? Tell me how you would say it. Mm, for uh, incorrect one, maybe I ask, I, I tell him, why your food is like that? I pay a lot for that food, but it's not uh, worth it. All right. I didn't so, eat. Good. Excellent. That's very good. Now, let me ask you, Did was Juan's question politically correct or incorrect? Who would like to comment on that before I give him the answer? Don't say anything, Juan. I want to hear everybody else. All right? Wait, Juan. Okay, Shaquille, tell me, was his answer politically correct or incorrect? Go ahead, Shaquille. Uh, yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah. Was Juan's answer question politically correct or incorrect? I couldn't actually hear what he said, but I think uh, if you allow me, I can answer my. Uh, okay. What you I give can. Juan the answer. Give him a politically incorrect answer. Well, there are two cases. If the chicken I tasted, it is actually rotten and not well cooked. I must tell him politely, but. Uh, if maybe it is not appealing to my taste only because uh, maybe I'm Asian. You're not answering I, my question, Shaquille. Answer my question. How would you say it politically incorrectly? Just say it. I want to hear what you would say. say that it, is, it is not appealing to my taste. No, not appealing, not appealing is politically correct. I want the incorrect version first. I don't like the taste uh, or it is. Uh, it is not well cooked, maybe. Why don't? Why couldn't you be honest? The chicken smells. I can't eat it, and the pork is overcooked. That would be politically incorrect, right? You're being honest, correct? You're being honest. And if you really wanted yeah. to be more politically incorrect, you'd say, "Was this cooked by a chef or by a, by a school kid, right? Or do you really have a chef in the kitchen or not?" That would be politically incorrect, right, Juan? Juan, are you with yeah. me? Okay, open your microphone, Juan. You're part of this conversation. Okay, now, very good. Now, let's take two different versions. So, Juan, tell me, how would you say it politically correctly? Hold on, Shaquille, I'm coming back to you. Go on, Juan. How would you put it politically correct? Open your microphone, Juan. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank now, you very much. Now, say it in a politically correct manner for me. Try not to be offensive. Go ahead. So maybe for me, I talk to the waiter. Uh, I maybe I I ask him. Uh, uh, why? Uh, maybe I, I see something like, uh, why? Why? Uh, host host the person cook this uh dishes. Why the taste okay. is uh uh like this? Maybe I I do some uh advice to them. Maybe next time, can you tell your uh uh tip that you can cook it at least and and the other customer they can eat uh also uh nice all right you've so been maybe very I, give, I give them advice yeah. you've been very polite and politically correct let's try yeah. one more yeah. and i'll give you both the correct answer go ahead um shaquille how would you tell the waiter 
Shakil? Uh, if I want to, if I want to give him a politically correct answer, I would say yeah. that uh, it's not appealing to my taste. All right, good. Okay. Uh, um, you say, forgive me, but the food today doesn't appeal to our taste. May I suggest that in future that your chef follows the more traditional Filipino recipe? Do you understand that one? Very good. Thank yeah. you very yes, much. Yes. Okay, good. Let's try another scenario. Let's try another scenario. Ladies, you're going to buy a pair of shoes, Amira. You're going to buy a pair of shoes, all right? And you pick a pair of shoes that is medium height, medium height. But the salesperson says to you, ma'am, you don't look good in the medium height. Why don't you buy high heel shoes? How would you answer him politically correctly, Amira? Go ahead. Open your microphone, Amira. Good afternoon, Amira. How are you today? Yeah, hi. Good afternoon, sir. How would you answer him? Uh, um, well, uh, it's okay, but I am the one who wore the shoes, so I should um, choose for uh, according uh, what my comfort, to right? My, yeah. Well, that was very politically correct. Good girl. Now, how would you tell him politically incorrectly? How would, if you wanted to upset him, what would you say? Uh, I would say, uh, it's my choice. It's not your own business. Yeah, but that wouldn't be that wouldn't be relevant. If you really want to upset him, you'd say, "What do you know? You're a man. You don't wear high heels. How can you tell me which one is better?" Right? So yeah. he would feel incompetent because you just questioned him as a salesman. That would be politically incorrect. You would cause more upset, right? But if you were to say to him, thank you for your advice, but I prefer to be comfortable, so I prefer lower heels, that would be politically correct. Do you understand that, um, Amira? Yes. Okay, good. Let me give you one more situation, Amira. You have somebody at work, all right? Listen carefully. You have a colleague at work, and every day this colleague comes to work, but they smell. They don't have a shower, all right? Listen carefully, Amira. How would you tell them being politically correct that they smell? How would you do it? Tell me. Uh, pol politically correct? Yeah, go on. Um, uh, sir, or mom, I think here in our office, we should, um, we should take a bath every day. So that's... <laughs> But that's politically incorrect because you're, you're, you're suggesting that he doesn't take a bath. You've just offended him, Amira. I like what you said, but it's the wrong way to say it, right? Okay. So, okay, Amira, I want you to think. This is why I'm asking you hard questions so you can learn from them. All right. Thank you, Amira. I'll, I'll give you the correct answer in a minute. Okay. Who could help Amira and tell me what is the political correct way to tell somebody that they smell? Does anybody want to try? Put your hand up. Okay, hold on, Amira, we've got some help here. Let's see if you agree. Go on, Rosemary, how would you say it? Listen, Amira, go on, Rosemary. Okay, uh, yes. How would you I tell would like somebody to... that they smell and be politically friendly? Oh, oh, uh, if there is someone into my colleague and there's like a smelly thing, I would like, uh, I would suggest uh, like, uh, hey, buddy, you have, I found a soap or a deodorant, the new one, maybe you can use it for, just try. I think it looks nice on me. Maybe it's you too. That's very, that's very polite. Thank you, Amira, would you agree with that? It's very polite, right? That's very yeah. politically correct, right? But if she wants to say it politically incorrectly, like I would say it, hey, Joe, you smell. When was the last time you took a shower? That would be politically incorrect, right? Yes or no? Yes. Or I would say it generally to the office, hey, guys, do you think we should use a stronger air freshener in the office tomorrow? Okay. All right. So okay. that would be a general comment. So do you all understand why I'm making you think? Because for many of you, you don't know the difference between politically correct and incorrect. And what I want to do is I want to open that brain of yours so you start thinking every time you're in a conversation. Do you follow that, everyone? Yes or no? Yeah? Okay. 
All right. I want you to start thinking every time you open your mouth in business, ask yourself, am I being politically correct or did I just score a, a negative point with my boss? Okay. Do you understand that? You, you know what brownie points are? What are brownie points? Do you know brownie points, Amira? What are brownie points? Uh, I don't know. Sorry. Well, when you score a brownie point with your boss, that means he likes what you did. You've done a good job, right? And when you don't score any points, that means you upset him or said something wrong. Do you understand that? So yeah. which should you be doing more of at work? Should you be scoring brownie points or upsetting your boss? Of course, brownie points. So you need to be politically correct, correct? Yeah. So if your boss gave you something to do, Amira, and you know it's impossible to finish, how would you tell him whilst being politically correct? Uh, I will say to my boss that, uh, mom, I think I couldn't finish this uh, until 5 p.m., so maybe I can go tomorrow at early in the morning before our regular time. All right. So but how would you say it to him? You would say to him, boss, I need to do this properly. I need more time. So if I don't finish it by 5 p.m., I'll come in early tomorrow. That would be politically correct. Yes? Yes. And if you wanted to be politically incorrect, what would you say to him? Uh, Mom, you give me this uh, too much load uh, work in the office while others you don't uh, assign them this work very that's very that's a very sharp statement amira if i was your boss you get a very dirty look from me amira what are you talking about you don't do any work all day what do you mean i give you too much work do you understand the difference between politically correct and politically incorrect amira yes so much very clear. good girl excellent good girl i want to wake you up amira because i want you to be active in the conversation thank you amira all right so ladies and gentlemen do you all understand the simple difference between politically correct and politically incorrect statements? Yes or no? Does everybody understand it? Yeah? So tell me, do you think that political correctness is important in business? If you think it's important in business, put your hand up. Hands up if you think it's important in business. Come on, everyone. All right, now take your hands down. Do you think political correctness is important for politicians or not? Hands up. Politicians. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So let me take this into a simple um, uh, idealization or a simple rationale. If a prime minister is treating the country as a business in running a corporation, technically or professionally, he should be politically correct all the time. Okay. Do you understand that? But unfortunately, politicians don't do that because they're trying to prove a point and protect the political party they belong to, all right? Look at Malaysia right now. Is there anybody here from Malaysia? Anybody here from Malaysia? One person, okay. What's happening in Malaysia right now, Priya? Can you tell me? There's a big argument right now that can be seen as politically correct or politically incorrect. Can you tell everybody what that argument is? Go ahead. Unmute your microphone, Priya. Can you unmute your microphone? Go ahead, Priya. Uh, Mr. Amala, could you help Priya unmute her microphone, please? Go ahead. Priya, tell me, what do you think is happening in Malaysia now that's politically incorrect? Do you know what's happening? Um, for now, uh, Malaysians' um, currency are going down. Yeah. But that's not what I'm talking about. There's something happening between the opposition party and the ruling government over the man who's in jail. And there is words going around that are politically incorrect. Can you share it with everyone? Because you're in Malaysia, I'm not. Can you tell everybody what's happening? Uh, but current situations, I don't know. Because I'm right. today. I'm uh, because I today I'm not uh, read the news uh, All right. Malaysia let, today. Let, let me brief you so you know. Right now in Malaysia, the former prime minister is in jail. He was sentenced to 12 years jail. The people that support him are trying to convince the king that he should give him a royal pardon, right? 
and they're yeah. making politically correct statements by saying that he served the country, that there is, um, we should give him some thanks for what he did right and not completely punish him even though he did something wrong. Okay, we should let him come out of jail but never be prime minister again. That's what they're asking for. The current government is saying, no, the man committed a crime and he should pay the punishment like everybody else, right? So what the opposition is doing in Malaysia right now is trying to use politically correct words by saying, even though he committed a crime, he doesn't deserve the severe punishment of 12 years because he was the former prime minister, okay? If you want to put it politically um, incorrectly, you would simply say he's a criminal, but we love him. He's part of our political party. He let him out of jail, right? But they're yes. trying to twist words to get him out early. Do you understand that? So government always has a reason for using political correctness. Do you understand what I'm talking about, Priya? Yeah, okay, now I understand. I apologize for using Malaysia as an example, Priya. Okay, it's okay. I'm just okay. trying to help everyone understand. All right. Okay, Thank okay, you, Priya. Okay, okay. Nice. Thank you, Priya. Okay. Does everybody understand that, that example? Yes or no? Yes or no? All right. Let's go to another politically correct example or politically incorrect example. Let's look at the reason why Russia invaded the Ukraine. If you ask the guy in Russia why, he will give you a politically correct answer saying that he's trying to defend the United Soviet Union of Russia. If you ask the Ukrainians, they tell you that the politically correct answer is he committed a war crime. Am I right or wrong? Do you all agree with that? Yes or no? Okay, so you need to understand the balance of when to use political correct sentences. Let's go on. Okay, so as it says, we live in a politically correct culture where unspoken rules of respectability govern conduct and cross-cultural interactions, meaning interactions among people of different races, genders, and religion. Obviously, um, the people that support the guy in jail in Malaysia don't respect the rest of the society that's a law-abiding society and is trying to use politically correct words to get an advantage, but Really, there is no argument or no justification, and it's very, very unlikely that they will succeed, all right, because of the law. Let's go on. It is essential to use politically correct language to avoid offending your audience and business. So in business, you must be politically correct. And politically correct means Expressing yourself using neutral, unbiased words that are not offensive and do not degrade or demoralize or discriminate against another person or group. Okay? Let me give you an example. If you are employing someone and you ask them, what is your sex? Are you male, female, or heterosexual? Would that be offensive? Yes. And you would be sued if you were to ask that in many countries because it's discrimination. You're not allowed to ask that question in Europe. You're not allowed to ask somebody their sex or their age in Europe when you employ them. And very soon, it'll become the same law in other parts of the world. It's already the law in most parts of Asia. Okay? So be very careful. Inclusive language considers all perspectives without exclusion inferiority or stereotyping be careful when you walk around the office that you don't say i don't like gay people or i don't like i'm um, heterosexual people be careful what you say because those words could be seen as offensive and stereotyping and you could end up having people say that you're discriminating or demoralizing the whole office Inclusive language considers all perspectives without exclusion. Remember that. It considers all perspectives. You don't point to he's less 
and person than me because of his sex, and you don't stereotype. You always use language that stays away from stereotyping. Politically correct communication means that communication must be truthful, factual, reassuring, and consistent. All right? Do you understand that, everyone? Remember what we said about a blind person? What did we say about a blind person? The person suffers from a medical impairment or a medical impairment condition, all right? Or he has a sight impairment condition, sight impairment. But well, we don't say he's blind because blind makes him feel less of a human being. Do you understand that? Yes or no? All right. If you want to talk about your manager to say that your manager is lazy, you don't go around the office and say to the girls, hey, girls, that new boss of ours is a lazy dumbass. Because one day he's going to hear it, Amira, and you lose your job, right? Yes or no? I'm only using an example, Amira. Yeah, right, Shaquille. And you wouldn't want to say it about your lady boss either because you might lose your job too, right? So what would be the correct word for saying it? You might say to your friends, our new boss has his own way of doing things. He takes his time. Very polite, right? He takes his time. He does them his own way. You're not saying he's lazy. You're not saying he's a dumbass. You're being respectful and you're not stereotyping him. Do you understand that, everyone? Amira? Good, Amira. Do you understand that, um, Denise? Thank you, Denise. Do you understand that, Hermina? Yes or no? So if I wanted to describe myself, I could say about myself and be politically incorrect that I'm a very, very, very strict lecturer. That would be politically incorrect because I'm giving myself a bad name. If I wanted to say it politically correctly, I'd say that I care for my students and my first priority is to make sure they understand the lesson. Which one was more politically correct? The first sentence or the second sentence? Number two. Thank you very much, Amy. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go on with the lesson. Just one moment, please. All right. Political correctness clears up uncertainty. It conveys the consequences. The best way to combat uncertainty is with clarity. Political correctness plays a key role in improving clarity, improving clarity. Remember last week we spoke about, or the last time we were here, we spoke about critical thinking and we spoke about how important critical thinking is in business, clear thinking. And we said that when you do that, you have to make sure there's clarity in the points that you're putting forward, right? Clarity. So clarity comes from being politically correct. Do you understand that, everyone? Yes or no? Wave your hands if you understand. Come on, wake up. Come on, wave your hand. Do you understand this? Uh, do you understand this, um, Ramina? Thank you, Ramina. Do you understand it, Rama? Thank you. Do you understand it, um, Lizelle? Lizelle, are you there, Lizelle? Thank you, Lizelle. Okay, all right, let's go on. Okay, so let's talk about elements that play a major role in being politically correct. Let's summarize some of the most important elements that can cause people to be offended and lose vision, all right? Lose Clarity. Number one, language is a reflection of the sociocultural milieu or milieu, as we call it, of any given society. Milieu means the popularity or the norm in any society. All right. Words, phrases, titles, and designations are derived from the prevailing conditions in society. 
Today, more than ever, society will not tolerate discrimination. 20 years ago, it was okay because people didn't know what discrimination really was. Today, business environment is inundated with people from different cultures, different ethnicities, different nationalities. More and more women have entered the professional corporate world, causing a number of gender bias terms to be inappropriate, right? So if you go to a meeting and say to a lady, you're looking beautiful today, all the other ladies or men could get offended because the men might consider themselves looking good as well. All right. You can't say to a woman or your secretary, hey, Clarice, you look very sexy today. She could consider discriminative or discriminatory because who are you to judge how sexy she is? So you have to be very careful of the gender terminology that you use, especially when there's more women in the office. You don't want to go saying to your colleagues, hey, there's a lot of good looking chicks in the office today because chicks refers to all the women and all the women in the office could then go and formalize a complaint against you for being discriminatory or sexist. Do you understand that everyone? Yes or no? Today, more than ever, gender discrimination language is one of the most prominent pitfalls of professionals face when writing a business document or addressing a business meeting. Example, instead of saying, guests and their wives, what you should say is guests and their spouses. Avoid terms like woman reporter, lady judge. Okay, be careful how you refer to sex and gender. Don't say ladies, gentlemen and other because that would be discriminatory. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Or good afternoon, guests. Welcome to all of you here today. It's great to see you all. Do you understand that, everyone? I've left out men, women, ladies, gentlemen. I've just addressed the guests as a whole. Neutral job titles. Professions that were considered male basti bastions are now open to both men and women. Policemen, mailmen. Chairmen, um, firefighters, fireman is now firefighter. Okay, used to denote a certain profession ending in man have been revised. Be careful because a lot of you still make this mistake when you do business. A policeman is now a police officer. A mailman is now a mail carrier. A chairman or a chairwoman is now called the chair in a company. All right, we don't call him the chairman or the chairwoman. We say the chair, all right? Does everybody understand that? Yes or no? All right, now let's look at some of the no-nos that you should never repeat if you want to be politically correct and be successful in business. Number one, you shouldn't use derogatory terms that apply religion or racial um, inference. For example, in a country like Singapore, in a country like India, in a country like Australia, where you have different people from different ethnicity, you have Indian um, Hindu, you have other Indian um, religions from other parts of India. So you should address all Indian people with the same respect. You can't go on and say, ah, oh, he's a Hindu Indian, because that would be discriminatory. Forgive me for using that example. I'm just giving you a general example. I could not say, oh, he's an Aboriginal Australian. I would simply say he's an Australian. Language is what connects one human being to another. If one uses certain stereotypes in addressing or referring to someone, it can have a deep impact on other people in the room. So I can't say, oh, he's a black Australian or he's a black person or he's got brown skin, because all of those would be racial discrimination. Just one moment, please. Okay, all right. So resentment, anger, pain, and hurt are some of the feelings that people might experience if they are labeled in a certain way. Are all the brown people here today, all the Hindus in the room today, 
they are discriminatory statements. References to race, religion, culture should be avoided in business communication. Terms such as blacks, got Eskimos, Orientals, Jews, Germans, all right, all of that have negative connotations. Why is the term Germans wrong? Because when you put the Jews and the Germans in the same sentence, there is a big connotation that the Germans killed the Jews, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So stay away from those words and statements that could be misinterpreted as derogatory, religious, or racial inflated words. Let's talk about physical handicaps. We said we shouldn't use the words such as dumb, crippled, retarded, or even handicapped. They are considered to be offensive in today's world and should be avoided. Instead, using the term person or persons with a disability is more appropriate and more politically correct. We shouldn't be using jargon because jargon inadvertently creeps in into a professional's communication and it may not be understood by other people and you could lose the business deal or you could be considered to be belittling them by speaking a language that they don't understand. For example, GDP or POP. If you're talking to an uneducated person, they would not know what GDP or POP means. They would actually treat you as somebody who's trying to pull a quick one over them or outsmart them simply because you're using jargon. So when you use jargon, you should actually say in your statement, today I'm talking about gross domestic product, also known as GDP, or today I'm talking about point of presence, also known as POP, or post office protocol known as POP. You should always be clear in show clarity in the words you use and not use abbreviations, which could be misunderstood as jargon. And you could be looked down at as trying to show that you're smarter than the people you're talking to, which could be considered offensive and you might lose business over it. You shouldn't use slang. Slang is meant as informal communication while talking to an informal group of people. So in Australia, if I wanted to say hello to everybody, I would just say good day. But good day is not formal English. It's informal English, all right? It's slang. If I walked into a boardroom and I was the youngest guy there and everybody around the boardroom were in their 50s, 60s wearing suits, and I said, good day, guys, do you think the boardroom would respect me? No, absolutely not. So formally, I should walk in and say, good afternoon, members of the board. It's a pleasure to be here in front of you today. And it's a pleasure to be allowed to speak at this board meeting. Okay. But if I just walked in and said, good day, guys, nice to be in this boardroom. All right. Do you think they're going to respect me to the same level? No, I've already lost the point. I might as well leave now. Do you understand that, everyone? Gentlemen. When you go to a business meeting, what's the most powerful color tie you can wear? Can anyone tell me the most powerful color shirt and tie you can ever wear in business? Can anyone tell me what's the most powerful color? Come on, I'm going to teach you something. Shaquille Abdurrahman, what is the most powerful color? Go ahead. I think blue. Is it blue? No, sir. You're, no, you're wrong. What is What color tie? Can you tell me? Uh, I'm not sure if it is white shirt and blue tie. No, know. sir. It's a white shirt with a red dye, red tie, red or maroon tie. Not bright red, but more red towards maroon, like Amira's scarf. And the only other exception to that is with little white polka dots. But the shirt should always be white. Do you understand that? Whenever you go into a business meeting, whenever you're trying to get a job, you should always wear dark pants, dark jacket, white shirt, and a red tie, a maroon red tie. Not, not blush red like lipstick. No, it has to be a darker red close to purple or maroon, all right? And polka dotted, all right? 
Okay, please don't wear a bright red tie like the clown wears at the circus. People will laugh at you. All right, be very careful of that. Always, when you go to a meeting, try to wear a plain suit, not pinstripe. Gentlemen, when you want to be successful and you want to present to a meeting, always navy blue or gray suit. Never black. Black is intended for funerals or if you're a lawyer going into a courtroom to defend a murderer, the court requires you to wear black as respect for the judge or his honor, his lordship. But in any other form of business, it should be navy blue, gray or charcoal gray. Do not wear brown because brown is seen as a very old fashioned color. Stick with the trendy business colors, gray, charcoal gray, and navy blue. Do you understand that, gentlemen? White shirts and maroon red ochre dot ties. Okay. For the ladies, Amo, and all of you, if you're going to a business meeting and you're meeting for a job interview, try to stick to the standard colors of professionalism black trousers, black jacket, black shoes, white shirt, or a shirt, a white shirt with maybe a colored scarf. But make sure you stick to the traditional colors, black and white, black shoes, all right? Do not wear pink high heels. Do not wear green high heels. Do not wear polka dot sneakers. If you wear a scarf, make sure your scarf matches the outfit you're wearing, all right? So if you're wearing a black jacket, black skirt, or black trousers with a white shirt, wear a nice white silk scarf or a nice off-white silk scarf that complements the rest of your outfit. Do you understand that, everyone? Ladies, the other big thing that gives away your professionalism is your nail polish. Nail polish. Whenever you go to a business meeting, make sure you haven't scratched your nails. Make sure your nail polish is perfect and stick to professional colors. Dark red, dark pink, um, very conservative colors. For the love of God, Amal, don't go to a job interview with orange nail polish. All right, Amal? Okay, Amal? Okay. Priya, don't go to a job interview with pink mascara and pink nail polish. All right, Amal? No pink. Um, Amira, please don't wear purple mascara, um, pink uh, scarf, and green shoes. All right? Because you won't get the job. All right, Amira? Keep the colors in coordination. Do you all understand that? Yes or no? Yes or no? All right. I said to my wife the other day, sweetheart, I'm getting old. I've got gray hair. So my Korean stylist said I should color my hair and make it blonde. And my wife said, if you have blonde hair, you look like a clown. And I, want, I don't want to go out with you anymore. So I had to ring my Korean stylist and say, sorry, I'm not allowed to have blonde hair. My wife said I'll look like a clown. And you know what he said to me? I agree with her. I was just suggesting that to make you feel better because of your gray hair. That's all. All right. So do you understand what I mean? Always think twice about what is conservative, what is politically correct. All right. Let's bring up one more point. Ladies and gentlemen, if you go to a job interview, is it politically correct to wear shorts? No. Ladies, if you go to a job interview, is it politically correct to wear shorts or mini skirt? No, not unless you're applying to become a stripper at a nightclub or a bar attendant. OK, otherwise you wear, um, you know, a decent length skirt or nice skirt and pants. You don't wear your tight jeans um, that, uh, you know, body tight or your leather pants to a job interview because that could be seen as sexist or you're trying to appeal to the boss's eyes and he gave you the job because of your look rather than your qualifications. Be very careful on how you dress politically correctly when you go to a meeting or an interview. Does everybody understand that? Yes or no? Amala, can you imagine what would happen if I came to deliver this lecture wearing a singlet and a pair of shorts? What would you do to me, Amala? Are you there, Amala? I think my co-host doesn't want to talk to me today. All right, that's okay, Amala. You're okay, mate. That's all right. We all love you, Amala. All right, Amala, what would happen if I came to the meeting in a singlet? Would you let me appear or would you tell me to go and change? No, go and change. Thank you. You see how good he is? He's my coach, but he never has to do it because I'm always properly dressed. Okay, thank you very much, everybody.
Nala, can I ask you, if you were going for an interview in India today, would you go to an interview wearing shorts? No, not at all. Not at all, right? Is yeah. it acceptable in India to go to a job interview in shorts or not? No. Thank you very much. And that goes all over the world, right? Amala, if you were interviewing a secretary today, hold on, and she came wearing a black jacket, green nail polish, pink shoes, and orange earrings, would you employ her? No. Why? Like she wears a black black jacket, right? Like so. Yeah. Yeah. She's got green shoes, orange nail polish, and pink earrings. What's wrong with that? No, she doesn't have any. She doesn't show a sense of professionalism. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Very yes. good, Amala. If you said you would hire her, then I'd ask you questions. All right, Amala. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. So do you understand what I mean about dress and code that you portray? You have to portray politically correct dress sense. And please let me explain why. The fact that Amala said he wouldn't hire you as a secretary because you look like the rainbow is because that is politically correct. Because the secretary is expected to portray a professional image in the office. Can you imagine if you came to work wearing a pink shirt, green skirt, orange shoes, brown hat, Santa Claus hat, and you had purple mascara on, and um, Amira was wearing a scarf with rabbit ears on it, and she came to work as a secretary? What would happen to all the clients that came into the office? Amira would be very popular. All the clients would want to ask her, why are you dressed like that, Amira? Or what would happen to the business reputation, Amira? All the clients would run away, right? Yes or no? Am I right, Amira? I'm only joking, Amira. Stop taking me seriously. I'm only joking with you, all right? Okay. All right. Good on you, young lady. All right. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Yes or no? All right. Amal is waving her hands too. Okay, all right, thank you, Amal. All right, so does everybody understand about political correctness? Political correctness is not only in the words you use, it's also in the way you present yourself and the image you present yourself. It should be politically correct for the situation that you're attending to. All right, let's go on. Let's talk about slang. A businessman talking about making dough is an example of slang. So if I said to you, um, hi, Shaquille, I can't give you a discount because I need to make some dough. What I'm saying to you is I need to make money. But that would be a politically incorrect answer. What I should say is I'm sorry, I really can't allow any more discounts because it would end up undercutting my cost, right? Understand that? Politically correct. No slang. All right? Does everybody understand that? Yes or no? Like you don't go into a restaurant one and say to the waiter, your food is very expensive. It's daylight robbery. That is offensive because you don't know how much they pay for the lobster, right? Yes or no? Has everybody here heard of Gordon Ramsay? You all heard of Gordon Ramsay, the arrogant American chef? Yes? I've been to one of his restaurants about six months ago. Do you know how much I paid for a hamburger? How much do you think a hamburger costs at Gordon Ramsay's? Put your hands up if you know. How much? Does anyone know? Put your hand up. Okay, Iris knows. How much is a hamburger, Iris? The price, the price. I know the hamburgers, but I forget the price. Okay, I'm cheating, yeah? Yeah, how I'm much? Googling. I'm Googling. I will cheating. Okay, all right, fine. Okay, all right, that's no problem. That's okay. Um, does anyone know the price of a hamburger at Gordon Ramsay's? Sixteen ninety nine to twenty five ninety nine. No, that will like that will not even get you a glass of lemonade at Gordon Ramsay's. But that cost that's... you fifteen dollars. Okay. So oh, you won't get a hamburger for six. Hamburger. Yeah, no wagyu burger. Wagyu burger. This a Wagyu burger at Gordon Ramsay's would cost you $159. Yeah, 
Okay, then the prices are wrong here. Okay, all right. But let me tell you why. No, it's okay, Iris. It's okay. I want you to be wrong. You're politically correct. It's okay. But what I want you to say, Iris, is if I said to the waiter at Gordon Ramsay's, this is daylight robbery, you're stealing from people, I would be rude, right? Yes or no? He would say, why did you come here? Our <laughs> Wagyu beef is imported from Japan. Go somewhere else. Check the price online. The, people why, the reason why people go to eat a hamburger at Gordon Ramsay's is not because of the meat, because they want to taste the Gordon Ramsay taste and they want to show off to their friends that I ate at Gordon Ramsay's restaurant. That's the only reason I went there with my wife, because she wanted to take a picture and show off that she'd been to Gordon Ramsay's. Okay, I hate Gordon <laughs> Ramsay. And I think his hamburgers are, are good, but not worth $159. I had two, by the way, because my wife ordered one and she couldn't finish it, so I had to eat it. All right. So what I'm telling you, it's very important to be politically correct. And I promised my friend, Mr. Amala, one day I'm going to take him to Gordon Ramsay so he can have a burger, but he doesn't eat beef. So I hope Gordon Ramsay makes a chicken burger for him. Am I right, Amala? OK, good. I promise you that, mate. OK. Is there any questions about that, ladies and gentlemen? Does everybody understand what I mean now about slang and political correctness? Denise, do you understand what I said about slang? Denise, thank you very much. All right, uh, Paula Joyce raised her hand. Yes, Paula, go ahead. Hi, sir, I have a question. Yeah, go. So now we know that how we do pol uh, political incorrect and correctness in yeah. business and in workplace. I have a question. Um, I have experienced one time that uh, we are having an Arabic chemical engineer. Yeah. And she is uh, well known in our uh, company, and she's been there since long time. And she was wearing because I'm working currently in United Arab Emirates in Abu Dhabi. Yeah. yeah so she okay. was wearing yeah bright pink abaya. Yeah. And then so I came in the meeting, and I was like you mentioned, I have to attend in a business formal meeting, like what yeah. you mentioned, a business formal attire. So yeah. in front of everyone, she looked at me and uh, from head to toe as if I'm the one who was wearing <laughs> not a business okay. attire as, as she is. So I mean, in those type of uh, situations, so how I should react then? Of course, I would, should not disrespect okay. her. Okay, that's okay. No, no, no. no. You, what you did is she was a visitor. She was a guest. So you were showing her respect. And proper business attire, usually in the UAE, I've worked there uh, for girls, especially in meetings is black skirt, white shirt, black jacket, high heels, and nice makeup. That's a standard business attire. It's professional. And that's what most companies require. Now, the fact that she thought she was an engineer and she was allowed to dress in pink, um, it's because she chose to dress in pink. But that wasn't the company dress code, right? You did yeah. nothing wrong. If she looked at you, you should just smile and say, well, it's great seeing you. I love your pink dress, ma'am. That's it, all right? What you say is you're paying her back the compliment, but you're not being disrespectful to her. All right. OK, let me tell you about those types of people, Emma, uh, Paula. Do you know why she was wearing pink? Why do you think she was wearing pink? I'm going to teach you psychology. Why do you think this Emirati was wearing pink? Why? Actually, as, as what I no, found no, no. out. No, no, no. The if, the but, the maybe. Just answer my oh. question directly. Why do you think the Emirati engineer was wearing pink? She's unprofessional? No, because she knew that all the foreign workers in the office would probably be wearing black and white. And she wanted to look okay. different to all of you. So she thought if I wear pink, none of the Filipino secretaries or the other nationalities will wear pink because they have to wear black and white as company standard. That's why she was wearing pink. Do you understand the psychology behind Emirati women? Mm -hmm. Emirati yes. women, um, Paula, always like to look to be dominant. Let me teach you something about the Emirates. When you come into a meeting with an Emirati woman, she wants to be the best looking woman in the, in the meeting. So if she's wearing an abaya, her abaya has to be the most expensive one in the meeting, all right? Mm -hmm. If she's wearing a ring, she will look at all the other rings in the meeting. The next time she comes, she will make sure that her diamond is bigger than all the others. That's the Emirati culture. It's not because they intend it. 
but that's the way they perceive it. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. So you should never take it the wrong way. You should behave like an educated young lady and understand that I'm working in their country. They always like to show superiority or show that they're better than the foreign workers. So they like to make sure that they stand out. That's why he was wearing pink. Do you understand that? That's mm -hmm. the psychological element behind why she wore pink. Does that make sense to you? Yes, Mr. Wally. Thank you. So the next time she comes in wearing pink, how are you going to handle it? Like you mentioned, just smile and uh, put the compliment, compliment of when she's wearing. All right, pink. okay. Can I ask you? I'm going to ask you a question, Paula. When you look in the mirror, no, I'm asking you a question. I want you to answer me honestly. If you stood side by side with her in the mirror, okay, who looked more professional that day, you or her? Me. Right. Myself. You should be proud. All right. No, listen carefully. You should be proud of yourself. Do you know why? Do you know why you should be proud of yourself? Because you did your boss a good favor by showing the rest of the company how professional you and your boss are. You maintain corporate image, right? If she yeah. wants to come in and try to show superiority or show that she's different, it doesn't reflect on you or your boss. It reflects on her. And next time your boss talks to her boss, he'll probably say, hey, you know, your engineer here came here last week wearing pink. She looked like a nightclub disco, all right? But your boss won't say it to her directly. He'll say it to her boss. Do you understand that? Does that help you, Paula? Yes or no? Yes, yes, Mr. Wadi. Paula, have I ever told you about how I married my wife? Do you all know how I married my wife? No. Amal, don't you share my story, Amal. You've heard it 20 times. <laughs> don't you ever dare share my story, Amal. How did I marry my wife? Does anyone know? Amal, do you want to tell them? Do you know? Amal knows, but he's not allowed to tell the story. Tell me, Amal, how did I meet my wife, Amal? Open your microphone, Amal. Uh, sir, you, um, sir, you forgot. forgot. <laughs> Thank you, Amal. Amal, I hope you, I hope you remember what you learned today, Amal. I'm really worried I'm about you. I think I have to give you more homework. <laughs> That's okay. It's all right, Amal. No worries. Okay. Let me tell you how I met my wife. It's okay, Amal. Don't have to be embarrassed. It's all right. Um, as long as you remember the lesson. Ladies and gentlemen, I got a job when I first graduated with a motor car insurance company in Australia. It was called Australian Associated Motor Car Insurers Private Limited. Um, I was very honored. I got a job three days after I graduated and I got a very high salary. And my first boss told me, after three days, I was junior vice president and I had to go to Singapore to sign a contract. Actually, I'd been there for about three weeks, three days. Um, my first three weeks was training. I went to Singapore and I was staying at the Grand Hyatt in Scotts Road and there was a five day meeting. And from day one in that meeting, there was this lady sitting at the other side of the boardroom table that looked very much like Paula with long black hair. She was that day wearing a beautiful black jacket with a Versace brooch a very big white shirt with a beautiful white bow tie, white a black skirt, high heel shoes, which were Versace. And she sat in the boardroom and said nothing for three or four days. She kept winking her eyes and telling everybody what to do. On the fifth day of the presentation, on the fifth day of the presentation, I had to sign the contract. And I looked at the gentleman sitting next to me and I said, we need to wait for your boss to arrive to sign the contract. Guess what happened, Paula? Guess what happened? Guess who the boss was? It was the girl looking at me like you with the black jacket who had been winking at me and smiling at me for four days, who has now been my wife for 33 years. All right. So I said to them, let's wait for the boss. And suddenly, Amma, sitting at the other side of the room, says to me, excuse me, I've been here for four days. What do you mean, wait for the boss? I said, I'm sorry, forgive me. You didn't introduce yourself and you've said nothing. She said, I'm the CEO. It's not my job to talk. I have a team that do the job. My job is to be here and support them. And thank you for respecting that. Now, can we sign the, sign the agreement? We signed and executed the contract. And I very politely said, can I buy you lunch? And what was her answer? Young man, do you really think I need you to buy me lunch? If you want to take me out, you take me to dinner. I will tell you which restaurant to take me to. 
Um, and I looked at her and I was stunned. I was speechless. You know, my salary was only $12,000 a month. And I was afraid of how much this restaurant was going to cost because I heard that Singapore women are very demanding. Anyway, but that's okay. Um, she said, where are you staying? I said, at the Grand Hyatt. She said, you take me to the Mazanine restaurant, which is one of the most expensive restaurants in Singapore. I said, absolutely. When can I buy you dinner? She said, tonight, 8 o'clock. I took her to dinner at 8 o'clock. Ladies and gentlemen, 11 months later, I proposed. I have now been married to her for 33 years. 10, 20, 33 years. All right? Now, let me ask you. If you ask yourself something, if I had used a politically incorrect sentence when she told me that she was the boss, do you think I could have invited her to dinner? No. No. If I had laughed or shown sarcasm when she said she was a CEO, do you think she would have taken me to dinner or allowed me to buy her dinner? Oh, no. She was wearing a Versace brooch worth about $45,000, all right? And it wasn't hers. It was the company's, by the way. But she had to wear it because it had the company because of her position, all right? Um, and I was wearing a cheap $500 suit, which is the most expensive suit I bought three days before I came to Singapore. So I was in no position to be politically incorrect to her. Do you understand that, everyone? Yes or no? And by the way, dinner that night cost me $2,000. It was the most expensive dinner I had ever paid for, for as long as I was born. And I was only like, I don't know how old back then. All right. I was very young. I was just over what, 20 something. All right. It was the most expensive dinner. And when I checked out of the hotel and the hotel showed me my bill, I had a heart attack. I was on the plane crying. How am I going to explain this to my boss? So when I reached back in Melbourne and he said, have you filled in your expense statement? I said, yes, boss. I had to take our, uh, our business client to dinner. Oh, that's okay, $200, no problem. I said, no, boss, it wasn't $200. It was 2,000 Australian dollars. And he said, what? I said, 2,000 Australian dollars. He said, why? I said, boss, you told me that when I entertain a client, I should give them a choice of which restaurant they want to go to, right? And she chose mezzanine. And when we got there, she ordered three bottles of champagne, 12 black Russians. And at the end of that, she ordered Japanese strawberries at $68 a serve. Am I supposed to say no? What image would that leave our company with? And you know what he said? Young man, you've done very well. $2,000 was cheap. You secured a $2.1 million contract. I'm proud of you. But what he didn't know is that six months later, I resigned because I went to Singapore to marry her. All right. Do you all understand what I mean by drawing the level of political correctness? Political correctness can either make you or break you. Do you all understand that? Yes or no? Yes or no? Okay. So, Amma, next time you try to go into business, get off your lazy bottom and start being politically correct, all right? Let out all the mashed potatoes, Amal. Fill your brain with green broccoli, green peas, and spinach, and start speaking politically correct statements, all right? Think out the project, Amal, before you go into it. That goes for all of you. The only reason I use Amal is because I know Amal is going into business and she's learning, and that's the only reason I'm using her as an example. That's all, all right, Amal? Okay? Thank you, young lady. And you know what? She's going to be very successful. This girl has got it. This girl doesn't give up. I met her the first day she attended one of my classes. And you want to see her exam results. This girl is going to be the CEO of her own company very shortly. And I really believe that in her. No, I'm, I'm not giving you a big head. I'm telling you the truth. All right? It's the truth. I'm not giving you a big head. All right, Amal? Yes, Amal. I'm telling you the truth. Okay, good. All right. Does everybody understand that? Yes or no? All right. Okay. Does anybody have any questions about anything else before I go on? Let me just continue my slides, please, um, because I want to cover the last slide. Okay. All right. Let's go on. So how do you take a business to be professionally 
politically correct, I'll tell you. But before we do that, just remember the importance of using Mr., Mrs., or Miss. Getting the title right in business correspondence is vital. The title Mr. immediately identifies the reader as a man. Titles of woman are tricky. Mrs. or Miss not only identifies the recipient as a woman, but also gives away her marital status. If you call her Miss and she's married, you just made her a divorced woman. If you call her Mrs. and she's single, she feels like she looks older. Be careful. Make sure you look at whether they're wearing an engagement ring or wedding ring. Be careful before you use the wrong one. If one is unsure of a woman's marital status, which title can become a guessing game? What do you do? Basically, you just use their name. Instead of say, hi, Miss Gordon, you just say, hi, I'm Mary, how are you today? Or instead of saying, dear Miss Gordon, you say, dear Mary Gordon. At least you don't become politically incorrect and offend someone. Remember, in order to practice political correctness, first, you must learn how to be politically correct. Two, you must teach the people who work for you to feel comfortable and teach them how to be politically correct. You must always remember not to use the wrong language, which is politically incorrect in the office, because then the people who work for you will start using it again, thinking it's correct. Always aim for thorough explanations and be clear, show clarity. Give them examples and be sure that they understand the examples. Allow them time to learn what political correctness is before you expect them or trust them to be politically correct. Does everybody understand what I just said about political correctness? Yes or no? Okay. Guys, today's lesson is not so serious. We're talking about simple things like speaking the right language. But I wanted to give you a break from all the serious topics, all right? So, and I know some of you have been asking for this for a few months, right, Emma? You've been asking for something like this. So today I have covered it. The next this talk I do, which is not next week, the week after, is going to become pretty serious again because we're going to look at contract in business. What are the different types of contracts and the laws relating to different types of contracts in different business situations that you can use when you're working for someone or to know if your boss says we need a memorandum of understanding or a contract, you know what they are. That will be not next week, the week after. So that's going to get very academic again. But today, I thought I would deliver something easier for you to understand so we can have some laughs as we've done today. And I do thank uh, Ms. Amira, uh, Ms. Priya, Mr. Amala, and um, Ms. Amal, Mr. Jordan, for allowing me to use your names in my examples. I apologize if I've any way offended you. It was not intended. Um, I'm just trying to make you understand the lesson, ladies and gentlemen. All right, can we go around the room? Can I ask, does anybody have any questions today? Anybody? Um, Carola, Carola, do you have any questions, Carola? Would you like to unmute your microphone, Carola? Are you there, ma'am? Unmute your microphone, Carola. Do you have any questions? Go ahead, ma'am. Hi, Carola, how are you today? Good and good, sir. Good. Everything and is clear, sir, for me. Okay. Uh, in correct, uh, and then also the correct uh, correctness. Everything Excellent. is Thank you. Good. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you at the next Miss Talk. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome, ma'am. Let me go up. I've got some questions. Um, the first hand that went up is Mr. Angelo Velasco. Hello, Angelo. So good to see you again today, Angelo. What's your question, my dear friend? Hi, Mr. Wally. How are you? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to ask if uh, how can I have a politically correct statement if my boss dedicate you dedicate you for a certain job, but uh, can't uh, you know that in the policy of the company that uh, can't be uh, give you a high raise for that uh, that for that misaligned uh, work. What you're asking me is not just a political question. You're asking me to comment about your remuneration, Angelo, uh, Angelito, yeah. and that's a very dangerous step because I don't know your job description. I don't know what work you do. 
Well, yeah, what actually, I suggest I'm part of the financial uh, financial uh, finance. But, oh, you're part uh, of finance. Was, okay. Yeah. I okay. Was okay. The data visualization specialist. Okay. All right. All right. But hold on. Hold on. Let me just ask you a question. Are you aware of the job description that the company has given you? Do you have a job description? Yes. Yes. All right. So when you evaluate what you're worth, you should base that not on the job title you have, but on the job description you should be given, right? Okay? Yes. Okay. Now, let me be politically correct, okay? Now, in the part of the world you work in, some companies always underestimate the value of certain jobs, all right? Because they think you work in finance, so they probably rate you just as a general finance officer, et cetera. All right. But that is not because they're trying to be wrong. It's because they have not had that job salary rated correctly. They don't use job evaluation, job grades, and they don't refer to a professional salary scale. Now, that's not only your company, um, Angelito. That's many companies around the world. So how would you ask, ask that politically correctly? Next time you have a chat with your boss on a friendly avenue, you could ask him, boss, could you be so kind to have HR review my job description and see whether the salary I'm being paid truly remunerates the job am I actually doing or are they classifying me just as a general finance officer, all right? But be very careful, Angelito. You have to ask that in a very calm, professional, and nice way. Do not let him think that you're telling him to do it. You're asking him to do it. Do you understand that? Thank okay. All right. Much. But believe me, it's not usually your manager. Your manager would rely on HR. And HR probably told him that when you get Angelito to do that, the budget is this much. He probably doesn't even know what the salary range for your job is. So you have to be very careful of that. All right, mate? Okay. Sure. Not, all, not all managers are HR and not all HR departments share salary ranges with managers. Because if they say to the manager, uh, Angelito's salary can go as high as $5,000, of course, your boss wants to make you happy. He'll sign $5,000. And that means HR has to explain why their manpower bill is too high. So they will say to him, oh, $3,000 is enough. And he will say, are you sure? They'll say yes, and he'll just agree to it, all right? Unless he says, hold on, but this job in the market is worth more. Why are we offering him $3,000? Now, if he doesn't do that, you can't blame him for that. It's because he doesn't know. Do you understand that? Yes, yes. And okay. please, Angelina, I'm not trying to fog you off. I'm trying to be politically correct. You understand that? Yes, thank you, Mr. And Lally. you can drop me an email, Angelique, or drop me a WhatsApp and tell me about your role, et cetera. Give me a copy of your private job description, market confidential. I can look at it from my HR 38 years experience and I can tell you what I believe the job's worth in US dollars, but that's just my advice to you. Don't use my name because I don't know what part of the world you're going to be presenting it in or what your company is or what they base their structure on. But I can just tell you what the general perception in the market is. That I can help you with. All right, mate? Thank you. Thank you. And you're welcome. Sarah. It's my pleasure. Uh, Shakir Rahman, go ahead. Uh, so my question is, uh, other than business and politics, if I'm too conscious about political correctness all the time, uh, don't you think it somehow uh, restricts my freedom of speech? Well, uh, Abdurrahman, you are putting, uh, sorry, Shaquille Abdurrahman, you're putting me in a very difficult position. You're trying to get me into trouble like your mate, Angelito. Okay, listen, I'm going to be frank with you. Let's be honest. If you're going out with your girlfriend, Shaquille, you don't need to be politically correct, all right? If you're going out with your mother and father, the people who raised you and know all the naughty things you've done, you don't need to be politically correct. If you're going out with your schoolmates and eating um, shish kebab, and having a cup of tea or a glass of water or anything else that you drink, I don't know what else you drink, um, you don't have to be politically correct, okay? However, whenever you appear in public with strangers, whenever you appear in public showing your professional image, whenever you appear in public in a shopping center, my encouragement to you is to always try to retain political correctness as a decorum, all right? 
because you may think it's wrong, but it portrays your professional image. Do you understand that? Now, it doesn't mean freedom of speech. What it means is you just have to use the correct words, but you can still say the same thing, right? Yes or no? Yeah. For example, Abdurrahman, if I was standing at a shopping mall with you and 25 ladies walked past, but only one of them stood out, we wouldn't say amongst each other, oh my God, the one in pink looks so hot, right? Because she would hear it and she might come and slap you on the face, right? Yes or no? Yes. So how would you put it in a more uh, politically correct way? You'd say to your friend, oh my God, all these women are beautiful, but there's one very beautiful woman amongst them. But you wouldn't point out which one she is, right? Because you would then be politically correct. Because you're talking about all of them, you're not upsetting one alone. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. All right. So you can still express your opinion, but make sure you do it in a way that doesn't offend others, all right? And I know sometimes it's hard, but that's the way society expects you to behave today. And Shaquille, you don't want to be offensive in public, especially with social media now, because all you need is somebody like Amal or, or Priya to be standing behind you with her camera. Next thing you'll know is she'll videotape you and put you on TikTok, and mm -hmm. then you'll ruin your reputation completely then it will become a bigger embarrassment, right? So you have to be careful of what is politically correct and politically incorrect. Because, you know, the young generation of today, most of you here, you walk around with your mobile phone and all you want to do is get a story and post it on TikTok, right? Or Facebook or LinkedIn or, or whatever you want to call it, okay? You understand that, Shaquille? Yes, sir, I do. Thank and you, you probably do the same thing, Shaquille. You probably walk around your country and TikTok people all the time. I don't know. I don't use TikTok, so I don't know. All right, mate? So just be careful. Being politically correct is better than being politically ruined. You understand that? Uh, yes, sir. All, I have... you, all you need is one bad social media story to go out about you and you could lose your job. All right? Yeah. Go on. Uh, I have another question. Go ahead. Like, for example, if you're uh, doing a job and you feel like you're being exploited, you are uh, your job description or uh, like if I give my example, I'm a private tutor, right? I teach student online and uh, in their houses. So sometimes their parents expect me to work on weekends, which obviously is not acceptable for me. So I don't know how to I count these. Well, uh, let me give you let me answer that. And I don't want to offend you but you're not really doing a job of a private tutor if you don't teach on weekends, all right? Because there's a reason for that. Because parents want to give their students the best results. So for them, teaching their students on the weekend when they're relaxed will deliver a better result, all right? So switch on your microphone, Shaquille, because now you're going to get a lecture from me because now I need to educate you like I've educated Amal in the past. Put on your microphone, open your mute. Hurry up. Unmute yourself, Shaquille. You're still muted. Can you unmute Shaquille, please? Yeah, Shaquille, yeah, yes, listen sir, carefully. Yes, I'm going to no, ask I'm... you three questions. I'm going to ask you three questions. I want you to answer them honestly. Why don't yes. you work on weekends? Because I feel like that's my personal free time and I have other errands to do. And my, you know, Okay, and... enough, enough, enough. Number two. As a tutor, what is your first obligation? Uh, to teach student to the best I can. Right. And what is the best outcome you can get for students? Improve their grades and, you know. Very good. You've answered your own question, Shaquille. But you see, you're looking at it from a politically incorrect perspective. You're looking at it from your side of the story. Okay? Listen carefully. Students go to school all day, right? They go to school, they come home, they're brain tired. If you make them attend your tutoring on weekdays, do you think they really learn anything from you? The reality is no. They retain 20%, the other 80% goes out. Now, if you want to be a cowboy and say, I don't care, you shouldn't be tutoring, all right? However, if you are a tutor who basically respects the profession, the academic profession, you should say to the parents this, I am available on weekends, but my time slot is only Saturday for one hour or 
Saturday for one hour and I charge more for weekends. That's it, all right? And you have to plan your schedule to say, if you want me on weekends, you have to book me like one month ahead and you have to guarantee the lessons because I have to turn away other activities on weekends, all right? Do you understand me? So now I'm not saying give away your whole weekend. No, don't do that. Say I'm available Monday to Friday. However, if your children want me on Saturday, I'm only available on Saturday between one and three and you need to book me for the next four Saturdays, guaranteed, all right? If you don't book me ahead, unfortunately, I'm not available on weekends, all right? You have to be politically professional. And you know what will happen then, Shaquille? If you are honest with the parents and tell them that, they will agree with you. They will understand you and say, Mr. Shaquille, I know. All right, so how about we do one lesson every second Saturday, Every other day they go to your weekday class, all right? But you need to give the parents the reason behind that, okay? And the reason is I can do weekends, but I'm only available at this time and my weekend prices are more expensive. And I do know that most children to prefer to relax over the weekend with their parents. So I don't want to deprive children of their mummy daddy time. But if your children really want to learn on weekends, I'm happy to do this. Do you understand that, Shaquille? What have I yes. just done? I put the weight and the responsibility back on the parents' shoulders, right? I said, the reason I don't usually do weekends is because I find the kids don't want to learn because I'm depriving them of spending time with their mother and father and going out with family activities. That's number one. Number two, I'm happy to teach on weekends if your kids really want to learn, but I must point out that my weekend rate is a little bit more and you need to book me for at least one month in advance on Saturdays. All right, that's all. And what yep. you do by explaining to them the reason they will understand you. By, by you just saying no, they're building resentment towards you. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. What I want you to do before the next time I see you, Shaquille, try my answer on one parent and tell me what they say to you, all right? Yes, I'll do. Thank you, And sir. now, be careful. Don't go and double your price on weekends because then they'll give you a hard time. So the usual loading on weekend is 50% more than the weekday rate, right? So if you charge $20 for weekday an hour, it means you charge 20 plus 50%, $10, so the Saturday rate becomes $30 per hour. You cannot double your rate, all right? You double your rate, then I'll tell you you're ripping them off, okay? Do you understand that? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right, I good do. on you, mate. I hope that helps you. Does anybody else want to ask me any questions about being politically correct? Come on, guys, wake up. Come on, I've still got to go and teach another class. I'm all fired up. Tell me, any questions? Okay, uh, I've got a question from Realme C15 Qualcomm edition. The gentleman in the white, you're waving your hand at me. Would you like to ask me a question, sir? You need to show me your name, sir. I don't know your name. No question? Yes or no? Unmute your microphone. Thank you, sir. All right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, from me to all of you, take care, study hard. Remember, we do have a session on Monday called Motivation by my mentor, Mr. Benson Ma, who's one of the world's most creative motivational thinkers, motivational leaders. And I expect Amal, Shaquille Abdurrahman, and every one of you to spend an hour on Monday at eight o'clock and join me and Benson for a very informal discussion. I think Amal sat in the last one. Am I right, Amal? And Amal, I think, was very motivated. And she'll tell you it's really fun. And when you leave, you feel very inspired to be successful. So give him a chance. And if you, if you really enjoy me, you're going to enjoy him probably 100 times more because I learn from him. I'm his student. All right? Does everybody understand that? Yes or no? Okay. From me, Wally Rada, the Australian guy here in Singapore, thank you very much for attending BizTalk 68. Um, my colleague will upload this talk 68 on YouTube at the Apex Stories by next week on Wednesday or Thursday. Am I right, Amala? 
okay? Please visit the Apex Stories. If you've enjoyed this, um, this talk, please go to um, social media, go to Facebook, go to Instagram and put, hey, Wally, great talk, political correctness in business. Hey, Wally, thanks for teaching us about political correctness, all right? Please, ladies and gentlemen, I need motivation sometimes too. If you're enjoying this talk, tell me about it. Tell me on Facebook. Tell me on social media. If you're too shy, tell me directly or tell Amala. He'll tell me anyway. All right. Okay. All right. If you think Amala's doing a good job, please put it in your comment. By the way, Mr. Wally, great lecture. And the guy who helps you, Mr. Amala, he's great. He makes sure we're all awake and switches on our microphones. He needs, he needs a compliment every so often as well. All right. Okay, guys, everybody there. Uh, Priya, why are you shaking your head, Priya? Are you tired, Priya? Are you going to fall to sleep, Priya? Priya, it's early. It's not even 10 o'clock yet. You're still going to go out and have a few drinks and dance. Come on, Priya, wake up. You're young. You and Amal are going to go out shopping and partying still tonight. Am I right, Amal? Yes? Uh, so is Paula. Paula's going out. It's Saturday. She's not working. So tonight she'll be dressing up and she'll be hitting the boulevard for a few drinks. She'll come home by 2 o'clock in the morning. She'll crash in bed. Tomorrow's Sunday. She'll wake up at 4 o'clock do nothing and go back to work on Monday. Am I right, Paula? Yes or no, Paula? Hello, Paula. You see, I'm right, I know. All right, everybody, from me to all of you, Kalola, Kalota, sorry, um, uh, Asa, all of you, thank you very much. Thank you for being here. I'll see you at the next Peace Talk. Thank you, God bless you, and good evening. Thank you, Mr. Amala. Good evening, everyone.